man outside the box reviews. He's back. The man behind the mask and he's out of control. Today we are looking at the NECA Retro Collection Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives. Jason Voorhees figure. And NECA keeps trucking right along with their Friday the 13th line. This is, I guess, their sixth release, fittingly enough. And they definitely hit me in my collector sweet spot because this is probably tied for my second favorite look of Jason Voorhees, right up there with part four. And it is the Jason from my absolute favorite Friday the 13th film. So when they announced they were doing this in the retro style figure collection, I didn't even hesitate. I knew I was gonna buy it. Even if I'm passing on a lot of these retro figures, the Jason and Voorhees Friday the 13th figures are ones that I am still all in on and want to collect all of, which is ironic since I still haven't picked up the first one but I'll get there eventually. So did NECA do justice to this version of Jason? Let's find out. For accessories, Jason comes with his fence post that he tears out at the beginning of the film. And they did a really, really nice job on here. You can see the part of the actual fence itself where it was ripped out of back here. We have the staff of the piece itself and the ornamental top that acts like a spear. They did a decent job painting it. It's a dark brown plastic with some lighter brown highlights on there to give it a very metallic look. Does a nice sheen to it. Here in the center we actually have a joint where it pops apart so you can actually fit into his hands because both of his hands are closed off so that gives you the ability to pose him with it without really creating too much of a break in the sculpt here which is nice jason comes with his hunting knife a unique piece for this version of jason kind of a short little handle here with the metal end to it and a really nice hunting blade now i never picked up the ghost face figure i know they both use similar knives so i do kind of wonder if this is maybe the same one or a similar one to the one they put out with him but i have no clue but i love this hunting knife design I love the serrated edge to it. NECA did give us the pouch on the side of his belt to hold this, but I have some problems with this pouch. If you have the figure yourself, you may notice a piece is missing. There's a clip up here that actually holds the hilt of the blade. And for the second time while I was shooting this review, that popped off. So I'm not gonna put it back on for the moment. I'll try to glue it back on later or something. But we are able to slide the hunting knife right into the sheath for easy storage on Jason's side. Jason also comes with his signature machete, which looks great, nice silver blade here. Fairly detailed hilt back here. You can see the rivets going through in the wood. Jason also has a sheath for that. So you can slide that blade into that sheath as well. It's a tight fit, but it's flexible enough as are most of these accessories with the retro collection that it will bend and slide right into the sheath. For the sculpt, I think NECA did a pretty nice job on the mask here. I do have a replica of this mask, so I'm very familiar with it. Very simple mask. It's that darker brownish tan color. They do have the little kind of line seams going through on it, which I think actually are movie accurate. Mezco did the same thing on their figure. I also saw it's kind of a weird look for the mask, but I think that actually is supposed to be there. We even have the little rivets here on the different sections of the mask holding the straps or just being ornamental. All the correct holes in it. A single chevron up there at the top. And an interesting add-on to this mask is that the eyes are blacked out. You can't actually see through them, which I don't remember if that was necessarily accurate to the film or not. It's very hard to see. So it kind of works for this version of Jason. And of course that mask is removable. And we have one of the least seen Jason Voorhees faces. You only get a very brief glimpse of this covered in maggots at the beginning of the film, but I think NECA did a great interpretation of the head. You can see there's a lot of just gross tendony looking stuff over here on the side. They painted it a nice shiny brown with different layers of browns and greens in there to really bring out the grossness. We have the one kind of dead eye in here, very dark brown. The other eye is pretty much gone. You can see bits of bone coming around there. His whole mouth is missing, torn up and gross. He has decaying ears there on the side of the head. Got nice nasty veins going there on the back. This other ear. We even have the scar on the side from Tommy and the axe wound from part three. And then NECA has actually added a sculpted neck piece, which is great. One of my big complaints with this line is when the neck is just painted for a character, say like Eddie, but here they did a great job sculpting all that detail in there that I could really appreciate. For Jason's body itself, they did a pretty good job here. The shirt is the classic dark green shirt seen in the film. They have weathered it up a lot. There's a lot of browns and reds in here either from the paintball or the blood of his victims. We have the pockets detailed on there, the buttons going down the front. Common complaint with these kind of figures, the collar's a little oversized. The Velcro doesn't quite hold shut all the way to hide that it is a kind of fake shirt on there. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. Hangs on the body fairly well for what it is. There's some nice stitching going on here. Going further down, we have his utility belt, which I also thought was an interesting touch with this Jason. Really well detailed, a nice green with kind of the brassy looking rivets and buckle there. We have his pouch with 
some extra stuff hanging out of the top. Not really sure what that's supposed to be, but the pouch is very nicely detailed with browns and blacks and silvers. As I mentioned before, we do have the sheath for the knife, which has some great stitching and eyelets on it. More eyelets around the back of the body. And then a very, very weathered up machete sheath, which is nicely done. Although now that I'm seeing it in the bright light, you can kind of see the glue around the seams here, but there's worse things, especially because I didn't notice it until the bright lights were shining on it. Jason's hands are well done. Another unique feature with this Jason is that he has gloves on, these gardening gloves with some great stitches. I love the brownish yellow color they gave him, along with the dirt and wear and tear. See all the details in the fingers and the wrinkles on the inside. As I mentioned before, these are closed off hands, which is why you have to break apart the spear for it to actually fit in his hands, but he holds everything pretty well, and so it's not really an issue. Going further down, we have his khaki corduroy looking pants, which did a great job with the fabric choice here. It's a nice blood splatter all over him. Very appropriate for Jason, of course. Then we get down to the bottom, and it's very tattered at the very bottom, and they have some nice brown boots there with some good detail on them as well. Kind of wish they would have painted the laces, but not too shabby. For articulation, it's standard with this 2.0 body for the retro figures. There's a ball joint in the base of the neck. We'll look a little bit up, a little bit down, side to side, as well as tilt. I think the range of motion here is a little limited just because of the extra neck sculpting piece, but I'd gladly have that sculpting and sacrifice a little bit of articulation there. Do a pin socket joints at the shoulder, so he'll go forward and back as well as out to the side. He is limited a little bit by his clothing. We do have a nice bicep swivel in there. We have a single jointed elbow that goes about 90 degrees, so not too shabby. At the wrist, we can rotate as well as hinge. The hinge is very nicely hidden underneath the flare of the bottom part of the glove here, which I really like. We have a swivel at the waist. I still kind of wish they gave us a ball joint in here so you can go a little forward and back, but the swivel works all right. The legs, we can go forward, back, as well as out to the side. Once again, limited by the pants. Let's swivel at the upper leg. Single joint at the knee, probably about 45 degree bend there. And then we have just the hinge at the ankle. Once again, wish we had ankle pivot, but what can you do? So here is our new part six Jason next to all of the previous releases in this NECA retro collection. On the left, we have the NES version of Jason, which is also the part three sculpt. We have the Roy slightly behind them. We have little kid Jason up front. We have mommy there in the back right. And of course, part two sackhead Jason looking very strange next to his hockey mask brethren. And seeing all these Friday the 13th figures together really makes me happy. I really hope NECA is able to give us more versions of Jason because I am a sucker for having a full Friday the 13th line. And having two figures in this line already that had never previously been done gives me a lot of hope for where NECA could go in the future. And here's this new Jason next to the Mezco Cinema Fear Wave 2 Part 6 Jason, which is one of my favorite figures from that line. And I'm not going to do too much comparison here because in just a few months we should be getting a new 7 inch scale version of the part 6 Jason in the ultimate format from NECA. So you know that will be getting a review and a figure wars with this Mezco one. But just seeing these two side by side, especially unmasked, you can see a huge difference in sculpt quality. And I'm really hoping that will translate over to the smaller figure coming soon. And if you've seen a lot of my other reviews on these retro style figures, you probably know what my complaints on this guy are. But they're really minimized by the character choice here. I think NECA did a great job with most of this figure. I think the sheet for the dagger could have worked a little better. That top section is just way too flimsy. I even at one point had the entire sheath pop off on me. So there's definitely some better design work that could have been done there, but the sculpting on this figure is superb. The paint apps are fantastic. The articulation on this 2.0 body doesn't bug me nearly as much as the original body. So this guy gets a pretty strong recommend. I think it may be one of the best NECA has done in this line. Line. And it also proves to me that character choice in this line is everything. Having a really grotesque Jason like this, or having characters like the Iron Maiden Eddie figures, I don't feel like these are dolls. When I'm dealing with characters like Ash and Pamela Voorhees, even though I'm very happy that figure was done, they feel like dolls to me, and that makes me like them a lot less. But this, to me, is still a badass action figure. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also, check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.